What does your grandmother have in common with beer and bananas? It turns out they're all radioactive. Does that mean you should be scared of all these objects? What is radiation anyway? And why is it in some cases dangerous? Welcome to Real Chemistry, I'm Dr. Morris. Today, we're gonna to be talking about radiation. We're gonna to try to understand what forms of radiation are scary and what the problems are that they can cause in the human body. It turns out that radiation is actually just the emission of energy. It can be in the form of waves like light or particles. Take a look at this chamber. It's called a cloud chamber and it's filled with cold alcohol vapor that's just on the edge of forming little clouds. And as radioactive particles fly through it, it actually causes cloud formation. So each one of those little paths that you see is actually tracing out the path of a radioactive particle. The thicker clouds you see come from a type of radiation called alpha rays. On the other hand, the thinner little trails you sometimes see, those are called beta rays. It turns out that radiation, like these particles, comes from an unstable nucleus. So you have a nucleus inside of all of your atoms, and if that's unstable, little bits of it can shoot off. And that's what we're seeing traced out here. But in addition to particles that can be shot off from a nuclei, it turns out that light is also radiation. It's energy being emitted, being radiated. And so for example, some forms of light are definitely not dangerous, like radio waves. On the other hand, UV rays from the sun we know are dangerous. Similarly, X-rays are dangerous. A star explodes in a blinding supernova, spraying X-rays across the galaxy to tell its tale. X-rays also tell a dentist which tooth to drill and a surgeon which bones to mend. So why is radiation dangerous? Radioactivity, as represented by the ball, causes electrons to be ejected from their atoms. It's an offensive move based on ionization. Ionization disrupts the structure of atoms of which all living matter is composed. An atom is part of a molecule, and molecules are parts of the cell. When they strike DNA deep within our cells, they can damage it. And cells that are damaged like this usually undergo cell death, or apoptosis. And then no further damage is done. You lose a cell, but that's it. On the other hand, in some cases, a damaged cell can begin to reproduce really rapidly. And that's what we call cancer. So there are two ways that radiation can be dangerous. It can kill tons of cells, or it can cause cancer. Both are actually demonstrated pretty well by sunbathing. That's right, sunbathing is basically taking a radiation bath. So wear your dang sunscreen. We all know there are two risks when you go out into the sun. One is sunburn. The ultraviolet light damages our cells, resulting in cell death and inflammation. On the other hand, we know that we can also get skin cancer. And this is what happens when your cell's DNA is mutated and your cells don't undergo cell program death and they reproduce at an uncontrollable rate. Those same two risks are actually what you see when you get exposed to radiation of any kind when it's dangerous. So at small doses of radiation, the main concern is generally cancer. Every little bit of radiation that you get exposed to turns out to increase your chances of getting cancer. However, at larger doses, your body can face serious problems from cell death. That's what happens in the movies when you see nuclear disasters or people dying from radiation exposure, and it's called radiation sickness. The manifestations of radiation in the body are many and range from slight to severe. Loss of hair, nausea, bleeding, inability of the body to resist other ailments and make its own repairs. These are some of them, and they may be climaxed by the ultimate symptom, death itself. However, complete recovery is more probable. The key to deciding if you live or die is the dose. Here's what happens at different dose levels. Here you can see the dose of different radiation exposures in a unit called millirem. Basically, the higher the millirem, the more particles and the higher energy particles you are seeing. At 200,000 millirem, you can start to experience the symptoms of radiation sickness. At 300,000 millirems, you have about a 50% chance of dying. Okay, let's compare those though to some doses you might see every day. It turns out that if you take a transatlantic flight, so that's saying you fly across the Atlantic Ocean, you get exposed to about 2.5 millirem. 
This is because you go higher up in the atmosphere where more of the sun's radiation can reach you. If, on the other hand, you look at the radiation that comes from your own body, it turns out to be 40 millirem per year. So every single year, your body, because of, say, the radioactive potassium in it, exposes you to some radiation. Or if you go get a chest x-ray, you get exposed to about 10 millirem of radiation. So we can see that all of those doses are way too low to give you radiation sickness. The concern here is not gonna be that lots of your cells die. Remember that you need a dose of 200,000 millirem before you experience symptoms of radiation sickness. On the other hand, the main risk from everyday exposures like this is cancer. So you can actually estimate your chances of getting cancer if you take the dose that you receive in millirem and divide by 25,000. If you do that, you get out the percent chance, roughly speaking, of you developing cancer from that incident. So for example, take your transatlantic flight dose of 2.5 millirem and divide by 25,000. You get 0.0001%, a super low percent chance. That works out to be about a 1 in 10,000 chance of getting cancer. Now that's not that high, it's not a large worry or concern, but when you add up all the things you do every day that expose you to radiation, you can start to see why, according to the National Cancer Institute, that nearly 40% of people will be diagnosed with cancer during their lifetime. All these little doses do add up, so they matter some, but any individual incident doesn't matter that much. Hopefully you can see now that the question of asking is radiation dangerous is pretty complicated. It depends on the type of the radiation, so for example, we mentioned that radio waves aren't dangerous while ultraviolet rays are, and it depends on the dose. So you need to actually take a careful look at things, not just ask the question, are they radioactive or not, to decide if it actually poses a risk. What about all the objects at the beginning of the video? Well, take the banana we looked at at the beginning of the video. It gives you a dose of about 0.01 millirem giving you just a, about a 1 in 2.5 million chance of getting cancer, okay? So that's pretty low. Not to mention that eating fruits and vegetables has been shown to reduce the rates of cancer, so you're probably actually better off after eating a banana. Meanwhile, hanging out with your grandma for a day would expose you to even less radiation, maybe 0.004 millirem. So you don't have to worry about these everyday objects which are radioactive, but what they point to is to ask a deeper question when you hear something is radioactive. That by itself doesn't mean it's dangerous. We have to take a closer look.